Hi, this is just a quick video about uh, my method of painting her starts uh, casts. I've been casting quite a bit. Uh, I've used up all my plaster of Paris and now I'm working on to some hydrocal. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos about how people have been painting their their casts. I'm not a good painter and trying to dry brush and stuff just wasn't working for me and it was time consuming. I didn't have the time. I prefer to be able to paint it, let it dry overnight, do another coat or something and then it's good to go. So I've been using Plaster of Paris on these and it's the same kind of thing. I've taken nine casts, glued them onto some foam core. Uh, I do other sizes, other than just 3 by 3s I go quite large because I find when we play 4E, it's nice to have a lot of room. And these little pieces do get in the way. I did cast a couple different sizes of walls, which I found to be actually quite important now. But one's a little shorter than the other, so I can do corners when it goes down into hallways, for example. But, this is the raw color of Plasters Paris when you do your cast. There is a form of painting miniatures called the dip. Uh, Army Painter has an amazing dip. It will make, it turns a half-assed painted miniature into really good. But it's expensive. Here in Canada, it's around $32 plus tax for a small tin. So I went on the internet, and they said, use Minwax. So, I ended up buying some Minwax, and I put it on one of my minis, and it ruined it. Uh, I don't know what I did wrong. Maybe it was because it's dark... Walnut, or maybe I grabbed the wrong Minwax. It just was not what I was hoping to do like what the Army Painter did. So now I got a bunch of this stuff sitting around and I had really no purpose to use it for. So I started building all my Herstard's casts and I'm starting to build my dungeons for my players and me to enjoy. So, I ended up buying uh, like black and then some sand color for dry brushing. And I tried a couple of pieces and I just was not good at it. So, the sand color that I ended up choosing is this. And this is my first coat. You can still see the white underneath. And I usually go until it's covered pretty much like this. Uh, you do see some white coming through. But it won't make a difference here right away. I use that Minwax wood finish and I coat the floor. It's pretty shiny, it's glossy, it does give it a really hard finish, but it does bring out all that texture. So this is the first in one coat and this also had the same white pieces that I was missing and Plaster of Paris, uh, I haven't tried the Hydrocal yet, but Plaster of Paris just soaks in the paint. Uh, and I'm worried about doing too many coats, or else I might start losing some of the detail, because I am using just cheap old household sand color from my local hardware store. But when you put the wood finish on, that dark stain actually fills in any white cracks or anything that you may have missed. Uh, it does stink. Uh, I live in an apartment, so I I do it with all the doors and windows open, and it does stink up the apartment quite good. The only thing was, is now that I had this finished, and then you take your mini and you put them on there, it almost looks too glossy, too shiny. And a lot of people had mentioned that I play with that that really doesn't have the best look. So... Army Painter Paints has uh, a dull coat. It's just as good as testers, but you get a bigger can and for almost the same amount of money. 
So, what I do is I blast my tile with that dull coat. So now, let me put this on. It, this is way more shinier than this. And it doesn't take much. It was basically a couple of quick zaps and now you got a nice little dull coat going. And with the wood finish, I believe that it actually seals this stuff pretty good. So now, when I feel this, this is solid. You can, it's pretty scratch resistant. Even with like that uh, dull coat, it still looks really good. And now when you put your mini on there, they pop out a little bit more. And they look pretty fantastic. So I've been doing this for a little while and I was like, well, I wonder if you could do it for other colors. So I ended up getting uh, Sedona Red and I thought, you know what, I want to try it. So I did the same thing. I used my uh, sandstone as my base color. Then I put the red on. And the red's a little bit thinner. It doesn't fill in the cracks nearly as good as that dark walnut. But it still hides and goes in all the surfaces. So this is one pre uh, my dull coat. So when you blast it with dull coat, it still looks pretty good. Oops. And the reason why I went to a different color and stuff is because just to add a little bit more flair to the dungeon. But then I was like, well, I do have the Hearst Arts Cavern Walls, and I want to start doing different colors. It helps add uh, some little flavor to the, to the table. So I was like, I wonder if I could do it with green. So I picked up some green, and I tried it out, and it's very mossy looking. But I think it looks pretty fantastic, actually. So I did a one floor tile and a wall. Or you can put the wall up. And then when you put your mini down, it kind of pops out a little bit. But I think this will look really good and a good, easy, quick method to use on my cavern walls. So I just wanted to share that with you, the people out there that may not be good dry brushers or people that are scared to actually paint and stuff. Uh, I ended up having that Minwax wood polish floating around and thought might as well give it a try. And actually I'm glad that I did because uh, I think it looks pretty fantastic, quick, fast. And it should be good enough for our games. I think it looks really good. But I just wanted to share that little tip. Uh, it's, I think it works great for myself. And if someone out there wants to try it, they're more than welcome. Alright, thanks for watching.